the 49ers drafted me, it was like a dream come true. I always want to be a part of the Super Bowl champs, and this is my opportunity, and I'm definitely going to take advantage of it. When fans debate the greatness of Jerry Rice, the argument is not whether he's the greatest receiver who ever lived. It's whether he's the greatest football player who ever lived. Hell alone, that's all Sixteen years, man. Been in the house like on Sundays. Right. No other place I'd rather be hey, right hey. now. Rice's dedication to his craft stretched well beyond Sunday afternoons. He had a purpose for everything he did, from the way he dressed. For me to play good, I got to look good once I hit the football field. To the way he practiced. I would prefer to catch the ball right here. If I catch it right here, I can put the ball away, also brace myself for the hit, and just roll up, roll up field and uh, get ready to explode downfield. Jerry Rice shattered every career receiving record. He has the most receptions, most yards, and he has crossed the goal line more times than any player in history. If you're going to be the best receiver to ever play the game, you're going to have to be able to take on the pressure of making the big plays. And Rice is there, and he's into the end zone! He's done it! The touchdown scorer of the century! Rice thrived in the big game, setting multiple playoff and Super Bowl receiving records. He appeared in four Super Bowls, winning three of them with the 49ers, and was named MVP of Super Bowl XXIII. And he has sure come a long way from Mississippi Valley State. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage the class of 2010 Hall of Famer, Jerry Rice. Hey, Steve, how you doing? How are you doing, how you doing buddy? Congratulations. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I think I can still play. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, you know, just watching those highlights like that, that was exciting. Why don't you tell t tell everyone what you told me when you were looking at those highlights? Well, the thing about Jerry, think how many times in his career that he's actually had to dive for a ball. He had an innate a, a knack amongst many things that he could do is that he could go to the ground, take balls off the turf, essentially, and keep running. He was the first guy that they made yards after catch as a stat because of Jerry Rice, because of how he ran with the football after the catch. Do you remember diving for a football, Jerry? No, you know what? <laughs> uh, when the ball is in the air, if it's uh, low to the ground, you know, I could always just use my big hands. And what I wanted to do, I always wanted to, you know, just keep moving my feet. That was important because, you know, like those difficult catches, you see a lot of guys just fall to the ground. I wanted to be able to snatch it and still uh, try to drop six. Now, remember, the thing that he brought to the game, really, there's some guys that come into football and they, makes it, they, they become successful because they're just blue collar. Their work ethic is just, they don't have a lot of talent, but they were, outwork everybody. And that's their, that's, their, that's their motto. That's what they get in one. Jerry outworked the work ethic guys, and had supreme talent. I've said for many years the thing that separates him is how many supremely talented individuals actually work at that one, one, the top percentile. Not many. Usually if you're really talented, you think, nah, I'll get him, no problem. Mm. And I just, uh, honestly, for the world, his work ethic, to my mind, yeah. Jerry, for, and, and, and I think for our team, he was the guy that decided that every catch I'm running to the end zone, and we'd wait for Jerry to come back. You know? In practice, you're talking In about. In practice, mm -hmm. and then pretty soon, everybody was doing it. And pretty soon, it was our motto. And pretty soon, it came out on the field. Well, that was the purpose behind that, because I felt if you caught the ball, now, you know, what you want, you wanted to do something with the football. So it was automatic during the game. And Roger Craig started doing it. Uh, Brent Jones, Tom Rathman. It caught uh, on. It yeah. caught on. And everybody is like... When someone caught the football, you had someone downfield that mm -hmm. was in position to make that block. And uh, so it was a purpose behind that. Where did that work ethic come from, Jerry? I think it came from my, my parents, you know, what they instilled in me. And, uh... I told you, I 
I told you it would happen. <laughs> what? I warned him of this. Of, of this very moment? <laughs> yeah. It happens, but it's fantastic that it happens. But it just comes flooding so back. So what, what, uh, what did they instill in you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Excuse me. It's okay. It's the enormity of it well, all. Well, let me, let me switch you know? up then. Let me switch this question up for you, Jerry. I was told you were actually nervous about today's selection process. Is that a true story? You were nervous? Yeah, that's very true because, you know, I never take anything for granted. And my parents, what they instilled in me, and my mm -hmm. father, he's deceased now. It was just hard work. Mm -hmm. Hard work and <clears throat> your appreciation for the game. And I love this game. It was everything to me, and uh, I'm really uh, just honored to be here, to be in front of all the legends who made football what it is today. Uh, you know, so many people here. I have my daughter here today, and you know, my wife, uh, and the mother of my kids. Uh, you know, she did a great job with raising my kids when I was on the road. And, and there's a sacrifice that you have to make if you want to be the best. And I respected this game, and, and I've had two great Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. You know, with Joe Montana and Steve Young, a great owner with uh, Eddie DeBarlo, a great coach. And I, I really love this man. Uh, Bill Walsh. Uh, you know, he meant the world to me, too. And, uh, you know, we just we went out there, we worked, and we played the game the right way. One of my favorite uh, memories, we just won the Super Bowl in 1995. It's January of 1995. And uh, I went back down to the facility in Santa Clara to pick up some stuff that I left behind. Uh, maybe three, four, five days later. And I look out on the field. No one's around. Everyone's gone with three, way, three ways to the wind for, after the Super Bowl. And Jerry Rice is out there running wind sprints. <laughs> uh, it gives me tingles thinking about it. Because that's, that's leadership when no one's around. That's leading other men. That's what, what football's all about, is leadership. And you lead by not when other lights are on. And I just, I, that's my, honestly, one of my cherished memories of Jerry is peeking out the back. Now, did I go join him in the wind sprints? Yeah. I did not. No. But, uh. Seriously, that was a solo gig for him that night. Did anybody join? Nobody joined. Jerry, oh, the poor receivers that came to the 49ers. It was a personal vendetta for Jerry to make sure he worked him into the ground. <laughs> but, I, you know, I felt it was important for me to set the example. Because I knew those younger guys, they were watching. And if I didn't set the example, uh, then they wouldn't give their all in all. You know, because we had veterans. I, when I came in, Joe Montana, Ronnie Lott, uh, Roger Craig, uh, you know, just so many great players. And, and I was just honored to be in that locker room with those guys and to be on the field with those guys. So it was all about passing on that torch. And I was able to do that. And then this guy came along, and we don't want to he was him. known as a running quarterback when he first came into the league. But then he wanted to become much more of a passer. And we were able to do some great things. And I think we, we scored uh, you know, so many touchdowns and until Peyton Manning and also Marvin Harrison came along, and, and they broke our record. And uh, now, just like Steve Young, Hall of Famer.